But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there for many days. But the great clothes rolled back. Then Jesus cried. Lazarus, come forth. Then somebody said,
survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but lost and for content on all my pride. See from me.
I can remember now why I don't eat before I preach. <laughs> and I remember now why I don't try to preach to people who have just eaten. <laughs> so we're going to sing a couple of rounds of Father Abraham <laughs> with the actions. I was asking somebody a minute ago, I said, which one of these chairs are recliners? <laughs> she said, I bet you could make one of them recline. I don't think I need it. Daniel chapter 6. Thank you, Brother Ron and Miss Brenda, again, for your gracious hospitality. And thank you most of all for your friendship. You think about um, your theme, trusting God no matter what, even when it seems impossible. And uh, I'm thankful for people that God has put into my life, some people that are, that obviously I'm close to. I mentioned my, my in-laws. I'm thankful for it. such wonderful in-laws. Um, most people have outlaws for in-laws, but um, I don't, and I'm thankful for that. I'm also thankful for Brother Ron. I, when I think of, uh, of people and examples that God gives us, like we saw this morning with David, and tonight, like on this afternoon, like we'll see with Daniel, um, of, of people who help me to remember that I can make it, uh, because I see other people who make it, who've been faithful. Uh, through the thick and thin, the ups and downs, the good days, the bad days, the bad days, the bad days, the good days, the bad days, the bad days, the good days. <laughs> and, and not necessarily in that order, but uh, something similar to that. And so I'm thankful for that. Uh, I know that if I've ever needed anything, I can call on Brother Ron and have from time to time. I've been in some pretty dark spots uh, in ministry. Or, and, it, and I know you have. Anybody here have, have, have any troubles? Yeah. Anybody here ever have any troubles? Hold your hand up if you have any troubles. For two reasons. One, keep it up just a second if you don't mind. One, I want to make sure you're still awake. <laughs> two, I want everybody else to see that they're not alone. Uh, we all have troubles. And so um, I just want to share, again, some thoughts um, that the Lord gave me um, in studying through this story of Daniel and reading after other men of faith who have gone through challenges and difficulties in their lives. So I entitled the Bible study, Taming your troubles, and most of y'all are familiar with the story of Daniel on the lion's den, right? And uh, and so that's the story here in Daniel chapter six, and and really, I'm, I'm just going to read down to verse ten. I'm going to encourage you if you haven't lately, uh, read through this story again. But let's read the first ten verses and and see if we can glean a couple things that will help us to uh, trust God, no matter what, even when it seems impossible. When you're about ready to be dropped into a pit of lions. It, I'm guarantee you that's going to look impossible. In verse 1 it says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, that the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was prefer preferred above the presidents and princes. And I have this underlined in my Bible, because an excellent spirit was in him. And by the way, you have that same spirit. Yeah. If you're born again, you have the spirit of God and the person of the Holy Ghost, yeah. which is an excellent spirit. Yes. Which helps us to know that we can make it when it seems impossible. Yes. Verse 4 says, Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning, this, concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion nor fault for as much as he was, what's the next word? Yes. Faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. He was faithful. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then the presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. With butter and eat him up, of course. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make firm a decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the means of the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, it's an important phrase right there. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, 
his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, notice this, as he did before time. And of course, you know the story. He does. They go back. They tattletale on Daniel. Tell the king. The king's like, I can't believe what just happened. Daniel and the king were very close friends. And uh, he has to throw Daniel in the lion's den. It's the law of the Medes and Persians. It can't be changed. And so Daniel, knowing the decree was signed, decided that he was still going to remain faithful. See, the key in the Christian life, there's a lot of things that you and I cannot do. There's a lot of things that not everybody in here can do. But there's one thing that all of us can do, and that is to remain faithful. Amen. We can stay faithful to the Word of God. We can stay faithful to prayer. We can stay faithful to the reading of the Word of God. We can stay faithful to attendance to the house of God. We can stay faithful to giving out of the things that God has given us. It's the one thing that we all can do. But it's the one thing the devil's going to try to keep you from doing. It's going to try to keep you from being faithful. And there's going to be times when you think everybody and everything's against you. As a matter of fact, the, the presidents and the priests came to the king and they said, all the presidents, in verse 7, everybody. Well, that wasn't true because, you know, number one, Daniel wasn't in on it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't in on it. But isn't that how it usually goes? It's always exaggerated. And that's the way the devil wants us to think. We think everybody's against us and everything's against us. So how was it that Daniel, and here's the big takeaway, actually I'm going to give you the takeaway at the end, because this was the thing that really helped me through a moment in my life, an experience in ministry, that, that, that helped me to uh, determine that I was going to continue to stay faithful. And I'm going to give that to you after I give you about 27 points here. <laughs> well, there's several big points, about seven or eight, and then there's a lot of little points under it, but so... Uh, the more you say amen, the faster I'll go. Uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're, not everybody's asleep. <laughs> so, so what, what caused Daniel to be faithful? Well, I think if I was to ask, every one of us would probably answer prayer. We would say prayer. Uh, prayer was a thing that kept Daniel faithful, I believe. And I said this this morning. One of the greatest resources, one of the most powerful resources that you and I have at our disposal is prayer, but it's the least used resource I think in Christianity today because the devil has convinced many of us that prayer does not work. I think the devil has convinced a lot of us that prayer doesn't work. Let me ask you a question. Take a little survey here. How many have ever seen God or experienced answer to prayer from God? Raise your hand. Everybody take a look around. Hold it up for two reasons. One, I want to see if you're still awake. No, two, look around. God has answered prayer. Thank you. And he still answers prayer. Where's Devin? Is this Devin right here? Yeah. Devin just got saved a few days ago, a few weeks ago? A couple weeks ago. Congratulations, Devin. Good job. Eight years old. God's still saving people. If God's still saving people, he's still answering prayer. Amen? Because you've got to pray to get saved. God answers prayer. And the Lord really drilled that down in my heart when I was going through challenges because I was out there. I'm like, everybody's against me. Nobody loves me. I'm going to go eat worms. You know? I mean, that's just, that's just the way it was. And, but I came across this in a devotional time, and, and that, the Lord said, Daniel is a man of prayer. So I want to give you some characteristics of Daniel's prayer. Real simple, if you'll write these down quickly, I'll go through them quickly. But I want to give you, the, there's a big takeaway at the end that I think will really help you. Number one, I want you to notice in verse 10, the Bible says, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before he, for his God as he did aforetime. Several things here about Daniel's prayer. First thing, I want you to notice the place of Daniel's prayer. The place of Daniel's prayer. He went into his house. He went into his house. What's your prayer life at home? What's your prayer life like at home? I don't know about you, but I know I can do better in my prayer life at home. It's easy to get caught up in all the stuff that's going on. It's easy to get caught up in what's going on when you get home, all the things that you need to do. You get up, you're tired from the day before, the alarm goes off, you know you need to get up and pray, but you've got to get busy, you've got to get to work. The list, the to-do list starts rattling off in your head, and you think, well, I'll just do it a little bit later. All these things come at you, all these things you think, well, I know it's important, but the other things get in the way. 
we have to prioritize prayer. Why would we prioritize prayer? Because as every one of us already admitted just a minute ago, God answers prayer. And so we need to pray. Somebody said, if God already knows, why pray? If God already knows, why pray? They said this, God likes to hear your voice. You ever thought of that? God knows every one of us by name. He knows where we are. He knows what we're going through. But did it ever dawn on you that God likes to hear your voice? My wife likes to hear my voice, as long as it's not complaining. <laughs> she likes to hear my voice when I'm praising her. She likes to hear my voice when we talk about different things. But she wants to hear my voice. It's not just enough for my presence to be there. She wants to hear my voice. And so Daniel went into his house and prayed. There probably isn't much chance of a prayer life in public if there isn't much prayer going on in private. There's probably not much public prayer if there isn't much private prayer. Could Daniel have prayed without getting caught? Could Daniel have still been faithful? Could he have still prayed to God every day? Could have went to his house, made sure, well, I better close the windows. I'll go into the, I'll turn the lights out. Uh, I'll get into a closet somewhere. I'm going to pray. I'm going to stay faithful, but I'm just, I don't want to get caught. And uh, I, I, I'm guilty of that sometimes in a, in a restaurant. It, it seems like the time when I'm like, you know, I'm really going to pray. And I'm not going to be ashamed about praying out loud at the restaurant. But it seems like we always get set down next to a group of people that have a bunch of alcohol on the table. And they're loud and boisterous. And I'm like, those, those people aren't saved. And that man, if I start praying, they're going to start making fun of me. It seems like that's what happens. So I'm like, well, I'll just pray real quick. You know. I, I drop my napkin on the floor. Dear Lord, thank you. <laughs> he laughed because you can relate. Uh, maybe. Uh, no, Daniel was bold in the place of prayer. Listen, it begins at home. It begins at home. You know why? Because it was conviction. Remember what I said this morning. We need to make sure that we affirm our convictions. Prayer is important. Prayer is something that needs to be prioritized. The second thing I want you to notice is the posture of Daniel's prayer. Not only the place, but the posture of his prayer. In verse 10 it says, He knelt down upon his knees. You go through the Bible, there's a lot of kneeling. When it comes to prayer. You say, well, do I have to kneel down to pray? No, there's just something empowering about us taking a specific action when we commit to do something. Did you catch it? There's something empowering about us taking a specific action when we commit to do something. It, it, it kind of it solidifies it a little bit more. That's, like, that's why when you buy a car, they make you sign on the line. It's a commitment. And when you sign, it, it's empowering. It, does, it's, it, it kind of solidifies that in your heart, in your mind, in your life. So every time you, you take some kind of an action step, it helps to solidify. And kneeling down is something that helps us to solidify. And not only that, it helps us to humble ourselves. They say of missionary David Livingston that when they found him, they found him dead on his knees. He had died while he was praying. Missionary Jim Elliott said, God is still on his throne and man is still on his footstool. There is only a knee's distance in between. Isn't that amazing? Listen to that again. God is still on his throne and man is still on his footstool. There's only a knee's distance in between. God's only a prayer way. The posture of Daniel's prayer. The third thing I notice in verse 10 is the priority of Daniel's prayer. I've kind of already alluded to that. But you notice there it says that he prayed how many times a day? Three times a day. Three times a day. You say, do I have to pray three times a day? No, but it's good. It, it's better than not praying. Amen? Three times a day. You, you say, what, what three times? Well, morning would be good. Amen? Start the day with prayer. Uh, prayer in the middle of the day helps. Kind of get you through the day. Prayer in the evening helps uh, get you through the night. Amen? It, the, the priority was prayer. Three times. Three times. And it, I think what that does is helps us to develop a habit. I remember being in college and... Uh, and uh, I think the guy was telling the story about another guy who would pray and they would call upon him to pray. And when he would begin his prayer, it was different than the way you and I oftentimes hear people begin their prayer. They'll begin their prayer by saying, Dear Heavenly Father, or Our Father which art in heaven, or you know, Dear God of heaven. This guy, he would stand up when he was called upon to pray and he'd say, And Lord, and then he would move on into his prayer. And somebody asked him one time, So why do you begin your prayer, And Lord? He said, I'm not beginning my prayer, I'm just continuing my prayer. That's just where I started out loud. That's just the point of where I started out loud. He was in constant prayer. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. Uh, 
Can you pray while you're driving? Some of y'all need to pray while you're driving. <laughs> but don't close your eyes. Uh, yeah, we can pray. We're just being in a spirit of prayer, constantly in communion with the Lord, asking Him, what is my next step? What is my next response? How do I know I'm more like Christ? Hey, here's, a, here's a great test to, to ask a question to ask yourself. How do I know I'm more like Christ? How do you respond to life circumstances? Do you respond to life circumstances the same way Jesus did? Or something different? The, the more you respond to life the way Jesus did, the more you, you and I are like Christ. So the priority in Daniel's prayer. Then there was the praise in Daniel's prayer. Look at verse 10. It says he prayed three times a day and gave thanks. When I first went to Fort Worth, the pastor, uh, I, uh, I got invited to a funeral. It was in like the first couple of weeks of one of the ladies in our church. And it was her uh, grandfather, I believe. And the preacher got up to preach and he said, the Bible says, that we're to give thanks in everything. And that's how he started it. And it kind of it kind of caught me by surprise. We're at a funeral, not quite the verse you start a funeral off with. I didn't think. But he said, in everything give thanks. You know, he said it doesn't say for everything give thanks, but in everything give thanks. And we can. We can give thanks in everything because, as I mentioned this morning, we know that God is still on the throne. Jesus is still alive. Amen? Yeah. The praise of Daniel's prayer, in the face of persecution, in the face of suffering, in the face of challenges, in the face of difficulties, in the face, which he probably knew, certain death, Daniel still prayed and gave thanks. We should give God thanks for every opportunity that we have to be a witness for Him. I mentioned 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. Verse 18 says, in everything give thanks. Amen? Yeah. Philippians 4 says, be careful for nothing, be, be anxious for nothing. Uh, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Next thought in verse 10, the privilege of Daniel's prayer. You know, I'm glad this, this afternoon we don't just pray to anybody. Right. The privilege of Daniel's prayer is that we pray to a living, holy, righteous, just God. Amen. And he invites us to pray to him. Matter of fact, he says, the Bible says that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. We can go to him and ask. I was with a pastor the other day and he invited, it's kind of a, uh, what we call a big time preacher, you know, his busy schedule preaches to thousands of people on the weekend. And he went right up to the guy and he asked him if he would come preach at his church. And I was like, wow, I can't believe, I can't believe you asked that guy to come preach. What made you think you could get him to come? He said, well, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. <laughs> I said, yeah, but you know who he is? He goes, I don't know. Don't be afraid to ask big. That, that's the same thing with God. Don't be afraid to ask big. Because we serve a big God. Amen? Amen? We get to go to God. It's not just anybody. It is God that we get to go pray to. The persistence in Daniel's prayer, you see that he said, the last part of the verse says there, he prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. This wasn't just the first time. This wasn't just when he was in deep trouble. Oh, no, they've signed a decree. If we pray to God, we're going to get thrown in the lions. Then, man, we're in trouble here. We better run to God. No, this was something that was consistent throughout his life. Three times a day as he had done aforetime. Luke 17, 1 says, men ought always to pray and not faint. <clears throat> men ought always to pray and not faint. Go down to verse 22. I want you to notice this was after what God had gone through the night. They threw him in the lion's den. And the king in verse 19, I'm sorry, verse 19, the king rose up very early in the morning and went and haste them to the den of the lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice, Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? And I bet you the king took a deep breath and turned and cupped his ear to that den. I mean, it just holding his breath. And he heard Daniel said, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, 
have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed his God. Trusting God no matter what. Trusting God when it seems impossible. Now let me give you just a little personal takeaway out of this and then we go take a nap. <laughs> Except for you who have already taken one. You have to stay and help clean up. Here's the big takeaway. I read this story and I read it a couple of times through. And Daniel was a man of prayer. He was a faithful man of prayer. Prayed three times a day. Every day. As far as we know, every day of his life. He was just a man of prayer. Powerful prayer. But he gets thrown in the den of lions because he's faithfully praying to God. How many people have said, man, I've been serving you all this time, and look what it's got me. That's where I was at. That's what I said to God. God, I've been pastoring now for 15 years, been in ministry over 25 years. I've been serving you faithfully. I've been through the thick and the thin, the yuck and the muck, the ups and the downs, the hills, the valleys. And here we are in the middle of this, and why is this going on? So I'm reading this story and I think, why? And why has God brought me to this? With Travis, Brother Ron, you guys know when you're studying, you catch, you're running out there here, and all of a sudden there's a cross reference. You jump over this verse, and all of a sudden you're consumed in that passage. You're like, how did I get over here? And then the Lord starts speaking to me in this passage, and that's what happened. So Daniel's a man of prayer. Obviously, he prays all the time. The guys that set this up against him, the only way they knew they could get him is if they caught him in his prayer life. Somehow or another, God tripped him up in his prayer life. But when you read this whole story, there's one thing, at least that I noticed, that's not there. Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den. He's there all night. The king is sleepless. He is just waiting till whatever first light is, I guess. Runs to the den. Daniel, you're still up. And Daniel says, O oh, king, live forever! I'm here! Everything's cool. Everything's cool. I've been sleeping all night with lions for pillows. <laughs> Man, been down here petting the kitty cats. Life is good. Got them all named. Felix. <laughs> What's that other orange cat? Garfield. Yeah, he's got Sylvester. He's got them all named. Here's the one thing that I noticed is not in that story. Now, how many would agree with me that this is a great passage about prayer? Amen. How many thinks we can learn several things about prayer? We've already seen some, and there's plenty more, right? Daniel prays three times a day, had to pray. But you know, there's one time that I don't hear anything about Daniel praying. It's when he's in the lion's den. When he's in the lion's den, there's... I mean, wouldn't that be the place that God would really drill down and really zero in and say, now listen... When you're up against it, when it's impossible, here's how you really ought to pray. Let me show you how Daniel prayed while the lions were circling. Let me tell you how Daniel... So I, th I thought, well, why, did, why is it that in there? Why is it Daniel? I mean, you're crying out to God. Get back against the corner. Stay back. Why is he... Here's what my takeaway was in that. And the reason why I was going through some challenges. Because I think God wants us to get to the place of our life, in our life that we're, we are so confident and so contented that we know our life's in God's hands and we don't have to worry about it. That's, I think that's where God's really trying to get us to. That when we're in the thick, isn't that one of our greatest testimony? Yeah. As, I mean, when, when, it's, when we're our back is against the wall, but we're still solid, we're still faithful, and we're not worrying, and we're not fussing, and we're not fretting, we're not biting our fingernails down, to the, we're not wringing our hands, oh my, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, in the heat of it. We're just moving forward. We're faithfully praising God. We're not, we're not, I think that's where God wants us to be. That's when we're our strongest witness before the world. Imagine the king comes to the pit, hollers down here to Daniel, and no answer from Daniel because Daniel's still praying. <laughs> and I've got to keep these lines off me. No, I think it's in, the, it's, in the, it's in the heat of the battle. God wants us to be that comfortable with him, that confident in him. He says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Verse Philippians 4, 6. He doesn't say don't worry. 
He knows we're going to worry. He, man, he knows us better than we know ourselves. But he says, when you worry, pray. But real Christian, I believe maturity, is when we're in the thick of it and we can focus on God. Full, undivided attention on God. And thank you. He wasn't praying in the den. You know why? Because he was prayed up all the way up to him. Why was he able to go through the den without wringing his hands and pulling his hair out? Biting his fingernails down to the quick. Because he prayed up all the way up to him. And when he got to the tough time, he's like, God's got this. Not I got it. God's got it. How was he able to do that? Because Daniel prayed faithfully. And that's what I would challenge you with. Is when you talk about and think about your theme, how to trust God no matter what, even when it seems impossible. What's the best way to get through that? Just keep on praying. God still answers prayer. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. God still answers prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for your mercy, your love, and your grace. We're thankful this afternoon to be reminded once again from your word you are a God hearing, God answering prayer. Uh, prayer answering. Prayer answering hearing God. Lord, I pray that we would be more committed than ever before to pray, to seek your face, to ask, and to trust in you, and live in such a way that others can see Christ in us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name.